Messages are the main means of communication on the AS400. Users communicate with other users. Programs communicate with users. Programs communicate with other programs. And devices communicate with the system through messages. You have different types of messages such as completion, diagnostic, escape, informational, inquiry, notification, request, status and reply messages. The system operator will be mainly concerned with informational and inquiry type messages. An informational message as the name itself implies is used to provide information. For example, the system operator sends an informational message to all workstations to inform them that the system will be shutting down at 2 p.m. An inquiry message is one that requires a reply. It can also contain information. For example, a user who is taking a backup of his data sends an inquiry message to the system operator asking if the backup tape has been mounted in the tape drive. As a system operator or even as a user, you should know how to send and display messages, how to respond to inquiry messages and also how to remove messages. Messages are not sent directly to a user or a program but rather to a message queue that is associated with a user, program or workstation as may be the case. A message queue is an AS400 object that is used to hold messages. There are four different types of message queues. The QSYSOPR message queue, workstation message queues and user message queues and user defined message queues. Let us take a closer look at each of them. QSYSOPR is the system operator message queue supplied by IBM. A workstation message queue is associated with a workstation. Whenever a new workstation is attached to the system, a device description has to be created for it. Automatically, the system will create a message queue with the same name as the device description. Similarly, a user message queue is also automatically generated whenever a new user profile is created and the user signs on for the first time. You can specify a name for the message queue. Otherwise, the message queue will be created with the same name as that of the user profile being created. In addition, the create message queue command can be used to create user defined message queues that may be required for certain applications. Let us now see how a message can be sent. The send message command can be used to send messages to one or more message queues. On the message parameter, we enter the text of the message that is to be sent. The message text has to be a single string enclosed within single quotes. We can use either the to user or to message queue parameters. When using the to user parameter, we can specify one of the following values. The name of a user profile to whose message queue the message has to be sent. Star system operator in which case the message is sent to the system operator message queue. 
star requester for interactive jobs the message is sent to the message queue identified in the user profile running the job in the case of bad jobs the message is sent to the system operator message queue star all active user causes the message to be sent to all the users who are signed on currently if the two user parameter is not specified we can use the two message queue parameter here we identify a message queue to which the message is to be sent you can name up to 50 message queues including the system history log qhst on the message type parameter we can specify either star info for informational messages or star inq for inquiry messages if the message type is star inq then only one message queue can be specified on the two message queue parameter in the case of inquiry messages the reply message queue parameter is used to specify the name of the message queue to which the reply should be sent let us look at the send break message command the send break message command can be used to send messages to workstation message queues only the user at the workstation will be interrupted and the message displayed on the screen you can send a message to a single workstation message queue or to all the workstation message queues if a user is signed on at the workstation the message is displayed if a user is not signed on the message is held on the message queue and displayed automatically as soon as the user signs on to the workstation since break messages always interrupt the person to whom it is sent you should avoid using it unnecessarily on the message parameter we specify the text of the message on the two message queue parameter we can specify up to 50 message queues we can also specify star all workstations in which case the message will be sent to all the workstations defined on the system irrespective of whether they are active or not the message type and reply message queue parameters are the same as in the send message command by default replies to break messages are always sent to the system operator message queue let us now see how a user can receive the messages that are sent to him as you just saw break messages always interrupt your job and are directly sent to your display you do not have to take any action to receive these messages the display message command can be used to view the messages that have been sent to your workstation message queue and user message queue the message line at the bottom of the display is another place where messages are displayed messages sent by the system as well as by application programs are displayed on the message line these messages are used to inform you about the status of your job or about errors that you make the manner in which the system informs you of the arrival of a message depends on how you have set the delivery mode for your message queue there are four different delivery modes you can specify for your message queue star break star notify star hold star default when star break is specified your work gets interrupted 
and the message is displayed as soon as it arrives. With star notify, the system informs you of the arrival of a message by setting on the message waiting light or sounding the display alarm. When the delivery mode is star hold, the message is put on the message queues and the system does not inform the user of the arrival of the message. A value of star default indicates that for any inquiry messages coming to your message queues, the default message reply that has been set up for the particular message should be sent back to the user who sent the original message. The system ignores the delivery mode in the case of messages sent using the send break message command. Those delivery modes are set up when the user profiles and device descriptions are created. It is advisable to keep the system operator message queue in star break mode since system message are almost always sent there. Another factor that affects the message delivery is the severity level specified for the message queue. Every message that is sent on the system has a severity code associated with it. The severity code can be any value between 0 and 99. The higher the code, the more important is the message. The send break message command always sends messages with a severity code of 99. The send message command uses a severity code of 99 for inquiry messages and 80 for information messages. Correspondingly, every message queue has a severity level associated with it. The system will interrupt or inform the user about the arrival of a message only if the message has a severity code greater than or equal to the severity level that is specified for the message queue. Otherwise, the message will simply be put on the message queue. The change message queue command can be used to change the delivery mode and severity for the workstation message queue or the system operator message queue. For a user message queue, these values can be changed in the delivery and severity parameters in the user profile with which the message queue is associated. When a user signs on at a workstation, both the user message queue and the workstation message queue are allocated to the user's interactive job. The delivery mode of the workstation message queue is automatically set to notify mode. The delivery mode for the user message queue is also set according to the values specified in the user profile. If there are any old messages on the message queues, they will be set to new and the message waiting light an alarm will be sounded. Once a message queue has been allocated to a particular job, only that job can remove messages from the queue. Other users may be allowed to view or respond to messages on this message queue. When the user signs off, both the message queues are automatically delocated from the job and set to star hold delivery mode. Any messages that arrive on either of the message queues when a user is not signed on is put on the message queue. All messages remain on the message queue until they are removed. You can use the work with messages command to remove the messages. With intermediate assistance level, you have the F11, F13, 
and F16 function keys that can be used to remove the messages. When using the F11 key, place the cursor on the message you want to delete before pressing the key. Press the F21 key from the work with messages display and set the assistance level to basic. With the assistance level set to basic, the display appears a little differently. The F16 key can be used to remove all the messages not needing a reply. To remove a particular option, we can enter a value of 4 against the particular message in the option column. This brings us to the end of the chapter on messages. In this chapter, we saw how messages can be used to communicate with other users on the system. We also looked at the message queues, the AS400 object that is used to hold messages. We saw the different types of message queues and also saw how to send messages to a particular message queue. And we also saw how to receive messages that arrive on a message queue. We also saw how the message severity codes as well as the message queue delivery mode influence how messages are delivered.